Welcome back to Z-Speed and thanks for tuning back in. Today we're going to be going over tire and wheel fitment for your 350Z. So if you've ever had questions like what size offset do I need or what size rim should I run or what size tire should I run in the front versus the rear, we'll try to answer most of these questions and also we'll be going over what size offset you'll need for a big brake kit. So stay tuned. patiently waiting for our delivery. He's scouting around, hoping that the delivery man will be coming soon. He's getting the area ready for the wheels. So at this point, where is our delivery guy? That's what we're waiting for. There he is. We see him, we see him. We see him, Cole. We see him. I think I see him right there, Cole. Cole, let's see. Yeah, there he is, there he is. We're waving him down. Here comes our delivery guy. Cole's anxiously waiting, and so am I, of course. So there's a couple ways to purchase your rims and tires. You can purchase those separately from whichever company you'd like. And then once you get them together, you can take them into your local tire shop and have them mounted up and then place them on your vehicle. Or you can do like I've done here. I chose a company like Fitment Industries. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I chose them because they had a really great deal on the tires if you purchase the rims from them. Then they go ahead and mount them for you and balance them. So that came out to be a much a uh, better deal for me. So check into that or any other company that might offer that deal. They also recommend that you open your tires up while the driver's there so you can check for any damage. And if there is any damage found, you can go ahead and ship them back and have replacements. So that's a really good deal as well. Now the good news was there was no damage at all and the rims and tires looked pristine. On the bad side here, you can see I've completely underestimated my tire size and I was not going for a stretch look and you can see I've got a little bit of a stretch going on here and that is definitely not what I was looking for. I was looking for a more beefy tire setup. But I will admit this tire setup looked really good once I got it on my car. Now, if you're running a more stretched tire setup like this right here, you need to be careful about doing any high rates of speeds or a lot of cornering or track work. This setup has the potential to de-bead if you are going extremely fast and let's say you have your tires very hot, there's a possibility that it could separate from the rim. So you need to be careful and you need to think about what you're going to be doing with your tire setup. Now, as far as rim size goes, I believe the optimal rim size for the 350Z would have to be either an 18 inch rim or a 19 inch rim. And so if you're looking for a more aggressive tire and you're planning on doing uh, a lot of street work or some track work and you have to have a bit of a beefy tire setup, then the 18 inch rim is gonna be much better for you and that's what I chose for my car. And the 19 inch rim will still fit great, but you may have to stretch the tires just a little bit, especially in the front to get a good fitment and or there's a possibility that you might have to roll the fenders. So think about that before you purchase your rims. Now, as far as what type of rims to buy, the sky really is the limit. There are some really great brands out there, Cosmos, Inky, Work, ESR, Volk, Rays, 
you can list these all day long, but you also have to consider how much money you wanna spend as well. So I've always loved the six spoke look. That's why I chose this ESR SR07s. Now that you've got your rims picked out, it's time to choose the correct offset. Now I really do think the easiest way to get the correct offset, depending on your situation, whether you're running stock brakes or big brake set up like a Bremo, a Willwood, or StopTech or something like that, is to let the manufacturer help you look that up. And so what I did was call Fitment Industries and say, you know, I don't have a Bremo brake set up, but I will be installing those later on. You know, what offset will I need to clear a Bremo brake set up? And so they actually contacted Bremo brakes and got the specs and they came up with a plus 12 to plus 22 offset to clear a Bremo brake setup. So I think that's probably the best way for you to choose your offset is to actually contact the manufacturer, tell them what kind of brakes you have and let them help you pick the correct offset. Now let's talk about tire fitment. If you want a semi stretch look, I got you covered here with 225 40 18s in the front and 235 40 18s in the rear. But I've been looking at these for a while and I'm almost positive you could definitely get a 245 40 18 in the front and a 275 40 18 in the rear without rolling your fenders and that would give you a beefy setup that would be more ideal for track. And if you've got something bigger on your 350Z without rolling your fenders, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to know what your tire sizes are. But as far as track work goes, I probably won't be going crazy with these uh, stretch tires because of the potential for it to de-bead in uh, with high rates of speed in cornering. Now that we're ready to mount our new rims and tires, I have a little trick for you. And that is to either put a wax coat or a ceramic coat on your rims. And all you need to do is clean your rims with some rubbing alcohol first. Just go over every square inch and that way you're gonna eliminate any oil or dust or debris from your rims and then you can take your favorite wax or even better yet a ceramic coating and go over every square inch of your rims and coat them with wax or ceramic coating and what that does is every time you go to wash your car it really makes it super easy to wash off all of the brake dust that accumulates on your rims in between each car wash and that will keep your rims looking nice and new. So if this is the first time you've ever placed aftermarket rims on your 350Z, you will have to remove a small 10 millimeter bolt with a small spacer, and it's located right here on your disc, and that just prevents you from mounting your stock rear wheel on the front wheel area, and that just comes off very easily. So another thing you need to consider is your center caps. You will most likely have to purchase those separately from your rims if you get them through like a website like I did, Fitment Industries. They did send me some center caps, but they weren't ESR and they didn't actually fit correctly. So I wanted ESR center caps anyway. So I was planning on purchasing those myself and I went to their website and got the exact design that I wanted. So make sure that you talk to your company and or order your center caps separately when you order your rims. Let's briefly talk about lug nuts. And these are the stock lug nuts that came with my 17 inch rims. You can see they're quite short and stubby and definitely hard to get in my new rims. You know, the new rims come with a very deep socket for the lug nuts and it's hard to get these in. Now I purchased these acorn style lug nuts from Fitment Industries and these fit much better, easier to get your fingers around and to drop into the rims and tighten by hand. You can see they both have a 60 degree seat right here. So they can, they will both work but the acorn style is much easier to fit inside the rim hole there. So 
You could use either one of these, but I would recommend an acorn style. Then after I ran the acorn style, I realized I wanted a extended lug nut because it's much easier to get your fingers around something like this. And it also has a separate seat, 60 degree seat here that doesn't scratch up your rim as much. And it just kind of sits there until it tightens down. Then it seats at the very end. So it causes less damage to your rim. So you might want to think about these extended lug nuts or these acorn lug nuts. Either one will work quite well. One last thing we need to talk about here is your hub ring. You can see that's right in the center of your rotor right here. And what this hub ring does is it allows you when to place your rim right onto this ring and it centers your rim perfectly. Don't have to worry about any rim drift. And so you can just pop your lug nuts on and be assured everything's lined up. So it fits in there nice and snug. But when you buy aftermarket rims, this is no longer the case. That hub ring does not fit exactly perfectly into your new rims and then you may have a little bit of drift and so you can go to the website of the rims that you've purchased. I got mine from ESR but this little plastic hub ring slips over your original hub ring and that allows you to center your new rims without much rim drift and it just makes it a lot easier to place your lug nuts on without the rim moving around and I would highly recommend that you purchase these but you can still you know center your rim with the lug nuts only it's just a little more difficult. Now let's talk about the limiting factors on the width of your front rim. And you can see that you don't have much room to roll this front fender anymore. You could probably roll it a few millimeters, not much. And you'd probably be better off pulling your fender. Uh, you're not gonna get much more room if you roll it. The other limiting factor here is your knuckle. And it's in front of your coilovers here if you're running coilovers, but the suspension is not your problem, it's your knuckle. You can only go so far with this knuckle right here in a 9.5 is what I was running in the front, uh, 18 by 9.5. And I had like about a finger between the rim and this knuckle, not much more play there. So that's your main limiting factor for the front. Now let's talk about the limiting factors in the rear and we have a lot less limiting us in the rear. We just have the suspension here. You can see I'm running BC coilovers and if you're running stock, it's really about the same. We don't have a knuckle getting in the way here. So you've got plenty of room to run a nice thick tire. I'm running a and rim and I'm running an 18 by 10.5 in the rear. And you can see this lip right here on this fender is going straight across and it's at least a half inch, if not three quarters of an inch. And you can roll this really nice and tight and come up with a lot more room here for your tire fitment. If you're having any rubbing issues, you can definitely roll this and get a lot more space in the rear. So I'm not even close to touching the uh, fender right here, but this would give me a good half inch, if not more, if I roll this. So that's pretty nice in the rear. You can get very aggressive as far as tire and rim fitment in the rear of the 350Z. Okay, we talked about this earlier, but you do not have to have a hub ring to center your rims. If you don't have a hub ring, you can center your rims with your lug nuts. And it's not too hard, it just takes a little bit of time here. So what you do is get your rim on your hub, and then you're, you're gonna go around with all five of your lug nuts and place them on by hand, and hand tighten all of your lugs until you get it to a point where you think it's you know, semi-tight. Once you get it to that point, you can grab the rim with both your hands and you can start to wiggle it around to see what kind of play you have left. And you can see I still have some play here. So I'm going to go all the way around again with my hands and hand tighten it until I get to a point to where it no longer moves at all. Then I can go ahead and get my torque wrench out and we can go ahead and torque our lug nuts down to 80 foot pounds. Now that we've got our rims on semi-tight, we can go ahead and torque them down. We talked about the 80 foot-pounds of torque. You just need a torque wrench right here, and we're gonna tor torque it in a star pattern. One, two, three, four, and five. That is a recommended uh, procedure for tightening your lug nuts. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set this to 80 foot-pounds, and we'll begin torquing. So here's one right here, and it may take you a round or two to, before they get down to 80 foot-pounds. But I'll just skip to the end, and there's two, 
three. Right here, I had to do a couple rounds to get it to click, and then four. And five. And that will give you the best uh, even torque all the way around your ram. Now let's talk fitment as far as flush and poke go. In the rear, I definitely have a good flush fit with a positive 22 offset. You can see that the wheel and tire come right flush with the fender, if not just a tiny bit of poke there. And it looks really good. No spacers needed, so that's nice. And in the front, even though my tire's not perfectly straight, I've got just a tiny bit of poke right there. So yeah, perfect. No spacers needed at all. So I'm pretty happy about the fitment. And that's a 22 offset positive in the front as well. So smash that like button if this video helped you out on your journey to pick out new tires and rims. I know I learned a lot, I hope you did. And consider subscribing. I sure would like to have you on board with Z-Speed. We've got a lot of great videos coming out this year. So until next time, just keep on repairing. <laughs>